G'day everyone. I thought I'd do a, a quick a sort of what's on the table um, update video. But who am I kidding? A quick video from me? Probably unlikely. <laughs> for those of you who've been following my channel for a while, you know I do tend to do longer videos. I think the last one I did was what? About half an hour. <sighs> but anyway, we'll see what we can do. Um, on the table in front of you, currently I am working on some Aventine miniatures. Uh, just at the blocking in stage, still going with that. Um, yeah, Aventine 28mm. Um, these are uh, Carthaginian imitation legionaries and Carthaginian veterans. Um, there's 12 miniatures in all. So I'll be working my way through those this week. Um, and we'll see how we go with that. So, yeah, change from the Old West, uh, from the last lot you saw from me. Um, in the meantime, um, some other updates. Uh, my own hobby stuff. Um, had some a couple of things arrive. Um, so I had arrive... Uh, let's see. I have to adjust the camera somewhat. Had arrived this this book. Uh, English Civil War recreated in colour photographs. A lot of you are probably familiar with this one. It's a Europa Military Special Number Four. Um, yeah, I thought it was. I got that second hand. I thought that was a pretty cool um, reference to have for painting. Uh, Yeah, just a nice book to have. I like to have these sort of visual reference books as well as like regular history books, particularly the visual stuff to help with painting um, and still trying to stoke the fires of interest in myself like uh, in the 17th century stuff. I'm still interested in that. Whether it will be English Civil War remains to be seen. We shall see. Because um, I also picked up... I'm a big fan of the um, the Rampant books, the Osprey series, the Daniel Mersey ones. This is in the Rampant style. This is the Pikeland's Lament, the one that Daniel Mersey did with um, Michael Leck. Um, so this one can cover the Thirty Years' War, um, English Civil War, right through to the end of the um, 17th century and the early days of the 18th. So as a sort of a large kind of skirmish game, I guess you can build it up to that. Um, small battles, um, you, you know, um, fairly streamlined to play. I need quite simple rules because I have trouble remembering complicated rule sets. Um, I don't get to play very often, so that does make it hard for things to stick. But if I, at least I have played Line Rampant and I've played... Um, the men who would be kings. Um, so there's a lot of very similar guiding principles there that can help with that sort of stickability aspect of a set of rules. So I thought that would be fun to get. Um, so that's that. Um, also, I ordered... Because um, I... It's hard to get um, down here in Tasmania where I live and well indeed probably in Australia sometimes it's hard to get affordable books um, for reference um, or inspiration for your wargaming we um, unfortunately unlike the UK um, we have a tax on books we have, it's part of the our VAT system basically our GST goods and services tax whereas um, I don't think it's changed in the UK but back in the 90s when I was working in the UK in the book selling trade there was no tax on books which I think honestly is quite an enlightened thing it encourages people to read hopefully buy books read books and so books were more affordable in the UK but here in Australia they're not as affordable they're more expensive and a lot of the books that we as um, war gamers like a lot of them are produced in the UK and so we can pay quite a premium for books. So tend to look for 
you know, secondhand things or inexpensive things where I can, or things that uh, might be in digital form that I can get printed out because I do not like reading things in digital form. Um, I find that a pain in the butt having, you know, um, studied and, <laughs> and done a lot of a degree online and stuff. Um, it really sucks reading <laughs> stuff online, documents and things like that. You get very over it and much prefer a real physical book you can hold in your hand. You can lay down on the sofa with and flick through and whatever, you know. Um, some people are perfectly happy with their tablets and whatever, but no, I can't I can't be having it. I'd rather have a real book. Um so yeah, like um and so it does pose some challenges for us. Um some books are more accessible than others, some periods are more accessible than others in terms of um, getting hold of the appropriate books. Um along those lines actually um there was a um, Lee and um, Mel and Jamie from the Battle Bunker um, just did a video interview with um, Barry Hilton from the League of Augsburg. And I really find the whole period fascinating, in part because I, I, I know so little about it and I want to know more about it. Um, but I said, I'd, I said to Lee, um, chatting on Facebook, that one of the big challenges um, here is affordability um and those of you um fellow australians who've seen like the um the really nice looking books that are coming out of helium for example there's some really cool reference books with plates and and on periods that haven't been perhaps covered before in such detail you know there might have been the occasional osprey volume but helium are really putting out some nice titles but the difficulty um and i i'm a you know I, i'll admit it, i'm a relatively low income um is that once those books into the come into the Australian sphere, um, as far as it, it converts to like, they're at least sixty dollars, sixty Australian dollars per book for paperback books, and plus whatever it's going to be for postage because you're not going to pick them up off a shelf here where I live, that's for sure. Um, so you're looking at a premium for um, reference books. Um, for periods that you might want to explore. So it was really nice of um, Lee and, uh, and Mel and Jamie to ask Barry about um, my questions that I had about um, trying to source reference material for that. And, um, and, and I certainly, you know, um, I'm going to follow up the links that they suggested um, and see what I can dig up. Uh, along those lines, one of the things that I have done um, as an option um, is inspired by um there's been a couple of andy mack uh who's on youtube um a wargamer in the uk has been doing some stuff recently um with regard to the monmouth rebellion and doing and jacobite rebellion around the same time um we're using 15 mil miniatures and one of the books he found um was using as sort of for reference for his sort of unit building was um one of the old um Field of Glory books, Field of Glory Renaissance books. And there's one particular um, uh, supplement in that series that covers the latter part of the um, 17th century. Now, it's not easy to find here. Um, I did a bit of searching and eventually I tracked down an affordable copy um, via Viceroy Books here in Australia. So I have ordered that. Now, my reasoning behind that is not that I intend to play uh, Field of Glory Renaissance, but because those books were originally published um, in cooperation between Slytherin, I think it was, and, and Osprey, they actually are, are full of um, Osprey plates and, and inspirational sorts of information. And you, So I'm going to be able to glean that. I'm not going to pay $60, 70 $80. Um, you know, I'll pay about... $25, $30 at the most to get hold of it. And I'm going to get a heap of Osprey um, plates. I'm going to get some stuff about army organisations uh, and little bits of potted history. And that's all just going to help sort of stoke the flames of interest a bit more and see where I can take it. Um, so I'm, I'm glad I tracked that down. We'll see how that goes. To thanks, thanks to Andy Mack. He probably won't watch this video, but, but thank you, Andy, for <laughs> bringing that to my attention. I'm, um yeah uh so 
along those lines, um, I can't. Um, I'm a, I'm, those who watch my video know that um, I mentioned before I moved house um, just before Christmas and to a smaller house, but at least the house that we're we're um, in the process of, of of buying ourselves. But um, I have a lot less space, and I sold a lot of my um, collection um, early this year. A lot of my dark age miniatures and some of my fantasy miniatures um and i've still got things that eventually i will clear out um so i i can't um for my per own personal collections i can't apart from the odd perhaps piece that i'll pick up purely for display purposes um i can't go back to collecting 28 mil i just don't have the space for it in fact my studio space where i am now is it's I used to be in a large open plan living area, but now I am actually in my, in our master bedroom, um, and that's where I have my um, working space. Um, and with some of my um, tools and equipment, is out in the garage. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I'm blessed to better have a home to live in. I'm thankful to have a roof over my head and all those good things. Um, but you've got to cut cut your cloth, don't you? Um, and um, make adaptations. So. Going forward, I've, there was there's some stuff I'd still I'm I'd, I'm really interested in exploring. Um, perhaps the English Civil War, and I'll show you some figures that have arrived with regards to those exploring that idea a bit further. Um, and this later 17th century stuff, uh, this League of Augsburg type stuff, really does interest me. Um, and also, um, what I am seriously thinking of doing. Um, you may remember I was painting some 28 mil colonial um, era miniatures for myself, for my own collection. And, um, you know, I made some progress. I made it, painted some units for um, many would be kings and things like that. But I, I don't feel I can continue to move forward with that be simply because of the storage space issues I have. And I got a, quite a lot of unpainted figures. And I was very blessed by James Brewerton sending me um, a great heap of figures from England as a gift um colonial figures and some of those i've given away already and shared with others or, or, or sold for a minimal pr price actually i think i gave them away anyway it doesn't really matter uh, anyway um tried to do things with them and um some of them i've got here um but i did he he did say at the time when he sent them look whether you go on and keep collecting 28 mil colonials or, 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 you know, cause I think at the time I was sort of tossing up, do I do this in 20 mil, do I do it in 28? And he said, look, you know, feel free. If you want to, you sell them on. And then that way you can get your 20 mil collection sort of thing. So I, it was very, very kind of him. Um, and at the time, um, I didn't know that I'd have to be <laughs> moving house <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's been a pretty stressful, 12 months there's been a lot happen um and um yeah so yeah at the time um in good faith i started uh, painting those miniatures up and uh, cleaning them up and 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 starting to assemble things and did assembled a whole box and painted a whole box worth of um sudanese and stuff and then bought some afghan uh, northwest frontier warriors from the perries in plastic and a bunch of metal perries and stuff like that and i've got quite a stash but I just don't see how I can go forward with it in terms of space. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I've been talking to a mate um, down in the south of the state and later on we're, we might sort something out about he and he might buy some of my collection. We'll see how we go. So, but, um, yeah, my thoughts are at the moment that um, I really like the look of the um, new line designs, 20 mil colonials, and I think, to take it forward, uh, that that would probably be the way I'll go to to get some of those to start to build up a collection of those um, to reduce the footprint. Um, I don't want to really go smaller than that. I have in the past tried fifteen mil Peter Pig uh, colonial stuff. Not as excited about that sort of um, scale for this type of conflict. I think just it the way it plays out in my own mind as I. I feel I want something slightly larger for that more sort of sense of individual personality that I get about these sort of colonial daring do and things and skirmishes and stuff um, rather than, you know, big set piece battles. Um, yeah, so that's probably going to be the way going forward. Um, 
Now, what has arrived um, in the post today, actually, I did a um, sort of an order from Lancer Miniatures. Just a little sort of exploratory order um, inspired by Stephen Smith, another YouTuber, great YouTuber whose channel I, and output I really respect. I find his um, videos very inspiring and encouraging and he's, uh, he's very enthusiastic about his projects. And he's, he did a lot of um, Lancer Miniatures, uh, 10 mil English Civil War. Um, so, yeah, I got my little order today from Lancer Miniatures. Little note, hi, John. Thank you for your order. There they are, Lancer Miniatures. And they do a real variety of things, as you can see there. And I just got a couple of units, English Civil War infantry units. You've got um, Shot and pike um, in these and the two bags essentially the same and they cute little fellas they are i don't know if that's the right word for war games because they are kind of cute i have painted 10 mil before um and they're probably not going to come into focus because they are so tiny teeny um i have painted um six mil before and um i've painted um 10 mil, seven years war miniatures before. Oh, it was in focus, then it went out. Yeah. So it looks like a little pikeman. So, yeah, there's enough there for a couple of units. And, you know, I could do these for pikeman's lament. There's a little chappy shot. His musket, or whatever it is. Do they call it a flint? No. Hmm. Ah, I can't remember. Um. <laughs> It's his gun. <laughs> so, yeah, they're really cute. Um, so there's enough there for a couple of units for me to um, e experiment with. And I went for the um, oh, the plastic pikes, which are essentially just like, um, it was just a convenience thing. I thought, oh, I'm not going to get the metal ones. I'll get plastic ones. That way, if I poke myself with them, I'm not going to hurt myself. Um, and um, they're basically just brush broom bristles. Um from a sort of a, a yard broom or, or something like that. And um, I think that's a good option, actually, often for, for pikes and spears. It's a bit of a way forward, get, especially some of the more heavy-duty yard brooms or brushes um, that you can get. You can get some quite sturdy spears, but these look nice and fine, suitable for, for the smaller scale. Yeah. So hopefully there's enough there for the pike from both those small units. I can't remember exactly how many figures there were in there, but um, yeah, I'll have it on the computer somewhere. But yeah, pleased to have those arrive. Um, so they should be fun to have a look at. They're kind of like reasonably chunky, but I think at smaller scales like this, you know, you do kind of need to exaggerate things a bit to make it easier to paint and for things to stand out a bit. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, something to poke around with. Okay, uh, let me look at my notes. Oh, yes. Okay, so we've talked about what's on the table. We talked about 17th century arrivals. About I talked about the Field of Glory book. Thoughts on where I might take things. Yes, and I'm still interested in getting probably some Pendraken um, stuff for the later 17th century i did think about maybe 15 mil because irregular do some nice looking um stuff for that period but i think i think 10 mil because the uh the guy who sculpts for the league of augsburg the warfare range of miniatures that barry hilton does it's the same sculptor who's done the um sculpted the miniatures for pendraken for the league of augsburg so they're kind of like mini me versions of <laughs> Of those guys, those twenty-eight mil guys, so which is kind of fun. Um, so yeah, I might um, in due course order some of them. <laughs> so ah, we'll see. <laughs> it's all about trying to maintain enthusiasm, which which I find challenging because I'm a lot of what I do, like well, I don't get to game much, and I'm kind of like got to play your own furrow sort of thing. Ah, never mind. Um, 
Okay, I wanted to give a couple of shout outs. Yeah, I gave a shout out to Lee and Mel and Jamie at the Battle Bunker. Thank thank them thank them for um um asking my question <laughs> and giving me a shout out. Um also I want to give a shout out to there's a, a new YouTube channel and my mate Darren from uh, Tassie that Tassie Wargamer has already given um this channel a shout out, but I want to reiterate that. Um, all my subscribers, I encourage you to go and have a look at a new channel called Digger Down Under Wargaming. Digger Down Under Wargaming. Um, a fellow Australian wargamer, I think he's over there on that big island up above us there, the mainland as we call it. Um, and um, he's a keen wargamer, he's been sharing his projects and what's on the table and he's got a fabulous collection of, of military books that he was sharing with us. Really worth a subscribe guys, so go over and subscribe please to Digger Down Under Wargaming, give the guy some support. And um, he's, he's very keen about the hobby. Um, now, um, another thing, I it's a weird thing to topic... To discuss but I just wanted to how do I put this um, sometimes I'm a commission painter right that's what I do for a job but before I was ever a commission painter I was a hobbyist like the I am, and I still am I still really enjoy this hobby and have since I was really um, young um, you know before I got into realizing that you could actually play games with rules and toy soldiers um before that i was playing D, &D. before that i was building model kits and before that i was like a lot of us collecting airfix and and tempo and britons and stuff and playing with them out in a rock rockery or knocking them over on the carpet or whatever like that um so you know i've been doing this been into this hobby sort of most of my life um but I think sometimes there there's the, there can be a perception that commission painters are just out when they join your group on Facebook or when they make a video that they're just out to tout for your business. And I just want to assure you guys that that's not the case uh, with me. I know most of my um, subscribers are not even based in the part of the world that I live in. That most of them are in the UK, and I. My custom but customer base are Southern Hemisphere based guys. I my customers come from Australia and New Zealand. Um, they used to come from the US pre COVID days, but the price of postage has gone through the roof. Thing postage to get there takes so long. Um, so I really tend to focus on Australia and New Zealand, and I have a, a cadre of regular um, clients, customers who are just brilliant and, you know, I've built up a rapport with them over the years and they're a great bunch. And, but I just want to reassure you uh, guys in the UK and elsewhere that I do not take customers from the UK or Europe because I, I have so many other guys I know in the, in the brotherhood of the brush, fellow commission <laughs> painters who who are based over there and and i've got no desire to to um tread on their turf or anything or try and tout for business amongst uk guys and and to be honest um there's a for me there's challenges with posting stuff to and from the uk it adds a lot a lot to um costs for postage um for the customer um, a lot of extra risk for me in terms of things going missing. And then often, um, unfortunately, customs services in the UK can hit folks with extra charges. And I really don't want that to happen to my customers. Um, we, don't, we don't get that here for stuff coming into us unless it's over really quite a high value amount. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really come into it for us. But I know sending stuff back to the UK and other places, it can be a bit awkward. So if I ask to join your Facebook group or anything there, I'm not there to tout my business, show, my, show off my wares. I'm a hobbyist like you. I'm, I, I, I want to share the fun of what you're doing. And I hope you can share the fun of things I've painted, whether I've painted them for me or whether I've painted them for someone else. Um, it's still a pleasure to do. And um, yeah, I just want to, 
if I'm sort of people think I'm sniffing around their group or their forum or their their online chat, I'm not there to um, tout for anything. I'm there because I find this hobby fun too, and I try and maintain my passion about it. Um, and it's difficult at times because I do feel very um, isolated uh, geographically and sometimes socially. Um, uh, there just aren't a lot of people around, um, unlike the UK. And I used to live in the UK for a number of years. Um, it's a very different scene over there. There are a lot more war gamers, you know, the show scene, everything. But here, um, we're very spread out. It's few and far between. And I don't even live in a big city. I live in a very regional area. So um, you just do what you can, have fun with what you have. I mean, and most of my enjoyment in the hobby is that I get to do is painting and reading and <laughs> listening vicariously to other people <laughs> talk about their hobbies and having fun and stuff. And, um, you know, that's fun too, you know. Um, so I'm thankful for guys like the Plastic Crack podcast and, um, you know, uh, the Battle Bunker and, and the Two Fat Lardies and all the different gr groups because it's just nice to hear the crack of um, people talking about hobby stuff and that somehow, and it used to be the way, you know, with magazines when all you had was a magazine, that was, you know, that's how you got your fix sort of thing because there wasn't really a community of gamers around you. So anyway... And I'm not whinging it, it's just how it is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a real mixture of things there. A bit of uh, what's on the table, a bit of my thoughts about what I might do next and where I need to change the way I collect. Um, yeah. Um, so we'll catch up with you again soon. I may do another video to show you what these guys look like when they're finished, these uh, Carthaginians. All the best, guys. And see, I can't make a short video. Already I've nearly run to half an hour. <laughs> see you later. Bye.